When you go to the gym and lift weights, your muscles visibly get bigger. However, this superpower is short-lived and you soon return to your normal human state. That is what we call the pump, and it's terrific. And it feels different. It feels fantastic. It's as satisfying to me as a c***ing is. And so can you believe how much I am in heaven? I am like getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling of coming reading scientific papers on hypertrophy. When I perform lengthened partials, I get the same feeling. So I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> but what does the pump actually tell you about muscle growth? Welcome back. Dr. Milo Wolf here today with Wolf Coaching, PhD in sports science. What you may not know about the pump is that it's actually been the topic of academic investigation. First, what is the pump? Well, that's what a paper entitled The Muscle Pump, Potential Mechanisms and Applications for Enhancing Hypertrophic Adaptations by Brad Schoenfeld and Brett Contreras tried to answer. The pump is an acute or short-lived alteration or change in the balance between intracellular and extracellular water balance. During lifting, the veins that take blood away from your muscles are compressed, reducing the blood flow away from your muscles. Meanwhile, the arteries are continuing to deliver blood flow towards your muscles. This creates an increased concentration of blood within your muscles. This then leads to some weird pressure dynamics where you're adding blood into the muscle, which increases pressure, and eventually what this means is that more plasma is flowing into your muscle. Importantly though, it's not the actual muscle fiber that is swelling, but rather the gap between them, what we call the interstitium that is swelling. You can think of it as a tire. As you try and pump more blood into the muscle, the pressure builds up. Lo and behold, you achieve the pump. And here's a fun fact. Muscle swelling from a session can actually last up to 48 or 72 hours after a session. If you've ever stopped lifting for a few days or weeks, you'll notice pretty much instantly you get a little bit smaller. Because of this, researchers actually have to wait for at least 48 or sometimes 72 hours after participants are done training in a study before they measure their muscle size. That's all well and good, and the pump is a beautiful side effect. But how does it actually cause muscle growth? Or does it even cause muscle growth? First off, what you get during your session, you know, the visually bigger muscles, the feeling, that's not actual muscle growth. However, could it lead to muscle growth when you get a pump again and again? Well, maybe. There is a hypothesis that an increased pressure within the cell eventually leads to the cellular membrane or the cytoskeleton detecting it, deeming it a threat to cellular integrity, and initiating a cascade of responses to reinforce cellular integrity. But what's the evidence for muscle cell swelling actually contributing to hypertrophy, as opposed to just a more evolutionary rationale for white might? Well, in a variety of other cell types, like immune system cells and breast cells, cellular swelling actually functions as a way to regulate the functions of the cell. Notably, faster twitch fibers, which are the biggest muscle fibers you have, appear sensitive to muscle swelling. For example, in rats, cell swelling has been linked to the uptake of glutamine, which is an amino acid that eventually leads to protein synthesis and potentially muscle growth. Another hypothesis about cell swelling and how it plays a role with hypertrophy is that it increases satellite cell activity, leading to the addition of myonuclei to muscle fibers. I have a whole video on myonuclei here that you can check out, but the long story short is, the addition of myonuclei into muscle fibers might be an important preparatory step before substantial increases in muscle size can occur. And therefore, by helping out in this process, cell swelling could help with hypertrophy in the long term. However, what I want you to take away from this section is that while there are mechanisms that could lead to a benefit of cell swelling for hypertrophy, it's not super clear cut yet. It's still relatively misunderstood. However, do we have any evidence in actual humans of the pump directly leading to more hypertrophy, or at the very least, being something that we can look at and say, because this causes more of a pump, we can say that this is better than that. For example, you might get more of a pump from a leg press versus a leg extension, and thereby infer that the leg press is a better exercise because it gives you more of a pump. Well, we do have a few studies in humans, but they might not be that convincing. Let me break them down. First, we have two studies in humans that try to assess correlation or essentially the link or the degree to which these two things happen together of muscle swelling, aka the pump, and of increases in muscle size over time. The first is a study by Hirono and colleagues from 2022 where they performed leg extensions for six weeks. In that first training session of those six weeks, they measured how much their quadriceps swole up 
from before the session to after the session, including right after the session, five minutes after the session, 10 minutes after the session, and 15 minutes after the session. Then they had participants trained for six weeks straight and measured the change in quadriceps size from before the study to after the study in nine different sites on the quadriceps. First, the participants' quadriceps absolutely grew from before the study to after the study. Additionally, the session did provide them with a pump their quadriceps swole for at least 15 minutes after the training session. Additionally, the swelling that they experienced during that first session was correlated with how much growth they saw over those six weeks. However, first, the correlations were about 0.5. In other words, if you look at the cell swelling and you look at the hypertrophy, only about 25% of the hypertrophy could be explained by the cell swelling experienced at the start of the study. What does this mean in this context? Well, it means that this study really tells us Participants that saw a pump at the start of the study then were also somewhat more likely to grow more during the study. What this doesn't tell us is that if this exercise causes more of a pump, it will then also lead to more hypertrophy. That is a very different thing because they didn't compare two different protocols here. They just looked at the swelling from one exercise and saw whether or not that was associated with hypertrophy over the study. And there's another caveat here. They measured cell swelling using ultrasounds. You are not an ultrasound. What you feel is a subjective experience of the pump. And that comes with a lot of things baked into it, not just how much did the actual cells swell. And importantly, as far as how your feeling of a pump and actual cell swelling correlate, whether or not they're even the same thing, whether you feeling like you have a pump really is the same as you having a pump, that's pretty invalidated. We just don't have research for the time being saying that your assessment of how pumped you are actually is correlated with how much of a cell swelling effect we see. And just to give you an idea of how novel this area is, in the discussion section, the authors didn't even really try and discuss the mechanisms behind why cell swelling might have been predictive of hypertrophy. It's just a pretty new area. But there is a second study. Unfortunately, this study hasn't been published yet, but it's a conference abstract, aka a study that was presented at a conference by Odo and colleagues from 2023. They once again tried to see whether the swelling of two muscle groups, the peroneus brevis and the peroneus longus, would correlate or be associated with growth over eight weeks. In this case, they performed two sets of 100 reps each time, three times a week for eight weeks for either their peroneus brevis or their peroneus longus, and wanted to see whether muscle swelling measured in that first session of those eight weeks would correlate with growth across those eight weeks. They also used the ultrasound to assess both muscle thickness and cross-sectional area. Once again, there was a significant correlation between increases in cross-sectional area from before to after the first session, aka their pump, with their hypertrophy of about 0.68. The issue there, once again, is that this study didn't compare different exercises or different rep ranges. It just gave participants an exercise to perform, looked at how much of a pump they got, and then how much growth they saw over the course of eight weeks. The issue there is that the participants that saw more of a pump may just have been more predisposed to growth. Perhaps they have better hydration, better nutrition, less stress, more sleep. There's a variety of confounders here that really make it difficult to say that the pump is what caused the growth, or even that the pump as you experience it is a meaningful predictor of hypertrophy. And indeed, that's where the story gets worse. Because while we only have two studies that try to measure swelling and hypertrophy thereafter, we have other studies that just measured swelling, didn't try and have participants come back in for say eight weeks afterwards to see how much they would grow from that same exercise, but studies that just measured swelling in response to a protocol. For example, Cassiano and colleagues in 2023 looked at the swelling of the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle, the gastroc at both a medial and lateral site, in response to four sets of 20 reps on either the seated calf raise or a calf raise with your knees extended. They used the ultrasound to measure swelling. After the straight leg calf raises, participants saw more swelling in their medial and lateral gastrocnemius compared to the seated calf raise. Conversely, in the seated calf raise, participants saw their soleus swell more compared to when they were doing the standing calf raise. So assuming that swelling correlates and predicts hypertrophy, you would expect seated calf raises to be better for the soleus and standing calf raises to be better for the gastrocnemius. And yet, that is not true. We have two studies now comparing the seated calf raise to a calf raise with your knees extended 
and looking at hypertrophy. One by Kinoshita and colleagues, and one unpublished one I've actually been a part of at Brad Schoenfeld's lab in New York. First, Kinoshita and colleagues' study on the standing versus seated calf raise found that the soleus grew similarly from the standing calf raise versus the seated calf raise. So if you expected more growth in the soleus and the seated calf raise based on those swelling findings, that didn't pan out here. Likewise, the study from our own lab found something similar. The standing calf raise resulted in more gastrocnemius growth, but actually resulted in roughly the same soleus growth. So even though we saw greater swelling in the soleus in the Cassiano study, across two studies, that didn't actually lead to more growth in the soleus. Importantly, these aren't the same samples, they're not the same participants in all the studies, the methods differed slightly, but still, it's just something to give you pause when considering the pump as something very important. Essentially, the same thing happened with the flat bench press versus the incline bench press. A study by Alborello and colleagues tried to measure surface EMG and muscle swelling, as measured by ultrasound yet again, during the flat bench press versus the incline bench press. Interestingly, surface EMG and muscle thickness were actually pretty discordant. And in general, I wouldn't use surface EMG as really much in terms of hypertrophy training, but let me break down the muscle swelling results for you guys. Essentially, in this study, they saw similar or slightly greater upper chest swelling with a flat bench, but substantially greater swelling in the lower chest with a flat bench compared to the incline bench. Now, wait a minute. Does that mean the flat bench is as good for the upper chest as the incline bench? I mean, first, you probably don't buy that, and neither do I, and here's why. We actually have one study comparing actual muscle growth in the lower chest and the upper chest, stemming from flat benching versus incline benching. And that's a study by Chavez and colleagues. They saw substantially more upper chest growth when doing the incline bench versus the flat bench. These results are a bit funky, and I can go into a whole video about that at some point if you want, but this just further shows that swelling doesn't seem to really predict hypertrophy very well. Yet again, one limitation is that the sample in this study and the Albarello and colleagues study is not the same. So you can't make a super strong inference, but it's still just something to give you pause. So, in these two studies that actually tried to measure swelling from two different exercises, the Cassiano study in the calves and the Alborello and colleagues study in the bench press. Both of these studies really failed to predict actual hypertrophy in other studies. And even more importantly, this was muscle swelling as measured via ultrasound, not your own subjective perception of what your pump is. We have no data suggesting that that's the same thing. Let me summarize what the pump is, what it does, and what you can and can't use it for. First, the mechanisms regarding how much the pump actually matters for growth and why it does are still relatively poorly understood. The pump may have some value in predicting who will grow more, not necessarily what will grow you more. As in, if one exercise gives you more of a pump and the other less of a pump, that is not a good reason to pick one exercise over another. There's a huge issue with using a pump as a justification or a rationale for using one approach over another. You are not an ultrasound. Until we have data saying you're an ultrasound, I would take this with a pinch of salt. That is to say, until we have data suggesting that your own subjective perception and rating of a pump is the same, or at least reasonably similar, to what we measure using an ultrasound, for example, I would be skeptical of using your own pump as a justification for a certain strategy. Here's a big important message. Do not use the pump as a means to select a strategy over more important and more evidence-based principles, like, for example, training at lower muscle lengths. In the case of training at lower muscle lengths, we have a body of evidence of about 20 to 25 studies suggesting that, hey, lower muscle length training is likely to be better for hypertrophy. In the case of the pump, we have minimal evidence that is relatively inconsistent with the additional caveat that you are not an ultrasound. So if you're picking an exercise that is, for example, training you at shorter muscle lengths over an exercise that is training you at longer muscle lengths, with your rationale being that the former gives you a better pump, you're making a mistake in all likelihood. The only time I ever really pay attention to a pump, besides getting a sick picture from my Instagram or from my YouTube, is if I don't get any pump whatsoever from what is seemingly on paper a pretty reasonable protocol, that might be something worth paying attention to because there might still be some correlation between your pump and effectiveness. But as long as you get a pump, I wouldn't really pay much more attention. That is the video, did a deep dive on the pump as a means to predict hypertrophy and guide your training. The truth is, it shouldn't guide your training. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more videos, basically reviewing all of the research on a given topic, leave a comment down below letting me know what you want me to break down for you. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace.
You can leave that in if you think it's funny. You can pay, take it out. I don't really care. Just set it. Intracellular, 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 and extracellular fluid balance. Well, let me repeat that. Hard words.